Psalms chapter 23 and verse number 1. I'm only going to read the portion of the verse that I'm interested in. David says, The Lord is my shepherd. And, uh, and I've been thinking about how that uh, he is the shepherd. We're his sheep. And uh, God has certainly been good to us. And I believe that David was saying that, uh, uh, that the Lord was his shepherd and he's willing uh, to go anywhere that God wants him to go. Do whatever God wants him to do. Amen. And so the Lord, uh, David is saying that he has confidence in the Lord. And uh, I'm glad this morning that you can have confidence in the Lord. Amen. Hey, whatever he chooses, he'll always choose right. He'll never choose to do wrong. Amen. You may not understand it. You may not ever understand it. But whatever God does, he'll always do right. Amen. Thank God for that this morning. And so David realizes that his shepherd uh, has a tender care over his life. And uh, even though you, we know that David messed up, we, we know that. I mean, everybody likes to throw that out there. You know, well, David messed up. Well, show me somebody that's perfect this morning. And that's not to excuse sin. That's not to give a license to sin, but... I'm glad even though we're not perfect, we serve a perfect God. Amen. And, and so today, I want us to just quickly look at some things and uh, hear concerning the shepherd. And let me say, first of all, he's the great shepherd. Amen. Hey, there's nobody like him. Hey, there's no other name given under heaven whereby a man might be saved other than the name of Jesus. I thank God for a saving shepherd. Amen. And so in Hebrews 13, 20, he said, Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd and uh, of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant. And, and so we thank the Lord this morning that he is the great shepherd. And I'm glad that I have uh, the great shepherd watching over uh, my soul. Amen. Hey, you can trust him uh, with your soul, thank God. Hey, there's some people I wouldn't give them the keys to my smokehouse if I had one. I'd be afraid they'd steal my hams, amen? But uh, you can trust God with your soul. You think about that, amen? You, nobody else in the whole world you can trust like you can trust the Lord. And, and so we thank the Lord. In Isaiah 40 and 11, he said, He shall feed his flock like a shepherd, he shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are with young. Uh, I thank God. I'm glad that he takes care of those. What a blessing it is to see all these young people up here uh, serving the Lord. I thank God this morning. I, I know that upsets the devil and uh, that he doesn't have them all. Amen. Man, there's some young people that love God. We ought to be thankful for that. Because many of you men are getting like myself. We are now that senior group. Hey, man, I remember just seemed like yesterday, folks called me up and say, hey, I want you to come preach my young people. How about preaching a youth meeting? I had a fellow call me a few years ago. I guess I was in my 40s then, and uh, he said, Brother, said, I'd like to uh, get you to come over to Gatlinburg and preach 
uh, to my church folks that we're going to take a group over there. I was all excited. I was thinking, you know, some teenagers, some young people, and I said, sure, I'd love to. I said, I, what group is it? He said, it's the Senior Saints. Amen. I thought, well, I've graduated. I'm up there in that senior class. and I, But thank God, I, I'm glad to see some young people I, because one day, hey, we'll be stepping off the scene. Amen. I, but thank God this thing will go on. And God will have a man I, to stand in our place. And I got to have some young ladies that will raise up how to be a preacher's wife. I thank God for the glory of God. He's our great shepherd. First Peter 1 4 refers to him as being the chief shepherd. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. There ain't nobody higher than him. He's the chief. Amen. I believe it was uh, Ed Ballou that said uh, uh, if he could save the chief, talking about Paul, he said he shouldn't have no problem saving the Indians. Amen. <laughs> and uh, so there's nobody that's higher than uh, our shepherd. Amen. There's nobody that can equal him. Don't ever try to compare the Lord against somebody else. There ain't nobody ever going to measure up after what he measures up to. I thank God this morning. I'm glad uh, that he is our great shepherd. And then I thought about the fact that he's a good shepherd. Amen. John 10, 11, he said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for his sheep. Amen. Hey, that's exactly what he did. He gave his life that I might be able to have life. He gave his life that you, I might be able to have life. Hey, we enjoy this life that we now have because he is a good shepherd. Amen. He was good enough to go to Calvary and pay my sin debt. I owed a debt I couldn't pay. Amen. He paid a debt he didn't even owe. He took upon himself our sins and bore that to the cross. Boy, we shouldn't have no problem loving him. We shouldn't have no problem serving him. You ought to get up every Sunday morning, I mean, excited about going to the house of God. Every Sunday night, excited. Every Wednesday night, excited about going and serving the good shepherd that's been good to us, that gives us the very air that we breathe. Amen. Hey, that gives us the health how that we enjoy how that saves our sinners when how they need help. Amen. He went on to say in verse 14, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep. Amen. He didn't stop right there. He said, and am known of mine. I'm glad I know him. I know him for what he is, Brother Jerry. Thank God. He means more to me than life itself. Amen. Because he is life. He's the one that gives life. And I'm glad this morning how that he gave me the life how that I now have. I'm glad that when this life's over, I know where I'm going. I'm headed to a better country, a land where there's no sin and no sorrow, no heartache. I'm just about done I, with this ungodly mess. I thank God it's about home time. Amen. He said, I know my sheep. Amen. You look around. I've had people come to me and they say, Preacher, I've got so and so coming to church. And said, I'll be honest with you, they say they're saved, but I just really don't know if they're saved. I said, Don't worry about it. 
Don't worry about it. Just get them to come. That's your job. Don't be trying to do God's job. He knows his sheep. Amen. He knows this morning as you look around. Hey, God knows the sheep. He knows which ones are. He also knows the goats. I won't get into that part. Amen. So you can go ahead and breathe. Uh, but uh, he knows his sheep this morning. And uh, the, a shepherd loves his sheep. I, I, I had an old uh, preacher years ago when I was a young man. He just got back from Israel. And uh, he said, I was over there uh, in a place where uh, there was a big old fire. And there's several shepherds standing around and he said they sheep all over them hills I probably a half a dozen or more I groups of sheep I out there grazing around and he got to thinking how's them shepherd gonna gather up the sheep how that belongs to him he said I know my people and they're known of mine amen they know me. If you're saved this morning, you know him. He said in a few minutes, one of them shepherds went over, got his uh, shepherd's staff, gave a certain call. Here come all these little sheep. He just walked off. And they started following him. Hey Amen. You don't drive sheep. You lead sheep. You drive goats. Amen. You can try to drive hogs, but they're so stubborn you can't drive them. Amen. They'll, they'll run out on you. I've tried it before. But uh, you just lead sheep. Where he leads me, I will follow. Aren't you glad this morning we have the good shepherd uh, that's leading us? Somebody said, I don't know how I'm going to make it. All you've got to do is follow the good shepherd uh, because he is the way and he knows the way and he'll lead you in the right way. He'll never lead you wrong. Amen. Amen. And I am known of mine. In other words, he knows us. He knows what we are. But he also knows what we can be for him. It's all about him. I tell my church quite often, hey, it's never been about me. It's never been about you. It's all about the good shepherd. Amen. Let me move on here. He's the gifted shepherd. Amen. Yeah. He's God's gift. Yeah. John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Do you know we're flesh? Yeah, we, are. we all like gifts, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. I like a little gift every once in a while. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I'm just human. Sure. My wife will go somewhere She'll come back, she'll say, honey, look here what I got you. It's not the value. Right. It's the fact that she thought about me. Right. I'm so glad that my heavenly father, yeah. a man God, thought about us yeah. and he gave to this world the greatest gift that's ever been known to mankind. I thank God this morning. How could we have ever made it without the Lord? We never would have. But I'm glad we have Him. And because of Him, and because He lives, we can live and face tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Romans 5, 18 said, Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift, came upon all men under justification of life. Then I thought about this. He's a grace shepherd. He came to bring grace. For the grace of God that precious gift that God 
gave to mankind. Amen. Yeah. And he gave us not what we deserved. If I'd have got what I deserved, I'd be in hell this morning. But I didn't get what I deserved. Thank God for the grace of God. I'm glad the good shepherd brought his grace, amen, and mercy. And because he loved us when we was unlovable, and he bought us while I was unworthy. I had nothing to offer him. That Sunday night, January the 10th, 1965, when I bowed at an old fashioned altar, I had nothing to offer him. He had everything to offer me. Guarantee you one thing, I got the best end of that deal. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Let me give you a couple more and I'll be done. Then I thought about the fact that he's also pictured as the grieving shepherd. As a man, John eleven thirty five, Jesus wept. Amen. He can be touched. Aren't you glad he can be touched? Amen. We don't always do right, do we? And again, I'm not encouraging you to do wrong. But I'm encouraging you when you don't do right, you can get it right. Amen. Because he cares. He can be touched by the feelings of the infirmities of our prayers. Luke 19, 41, and when he was come near, he beheld the city, and he wept over it. He also went to say in Matthew 23 and verse 37, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chicken under her wing, and you would not. Hey, thank God. He's a merciful and a grieving God. I'm going to be honest with you. There's been times that I know that I probably grieved him. I'm not proud of that. In fact, I'm ashamed of it. I'm sure there's been some times that I've grieved him. But there's been some times when I've pleased him. I was a little boy my dad my dad was raised poor and he worked hard and me and my brother he brought us up just uh, the hard way you just get out there and get it he'd tell me he'd say well you're trying to stand around there and figure out how to do it easier he said you could have done had it done <laughs> and so I mean he was just go at it go at it and uh and there was times when he'd leave to go to work. He'd say, now boys, I want this done, I want this done, I want this done. And sometimes we spent, Brother Rocky, we spent too much time playing. Yes, sir. And we didn't have all that done. And you could about set your watch to when he's going to come home. Between 425 and 435, he's going to come up that road from work. And there's been some times when I knew I had not pleased him. I wasn't wanting to see him. In fact, I would even kind of try to hide. But he always seemed to find out where I was at. Amen. And, uh, but there was some times when I had done the things and maybe even a little more. He didn't ask for. But I went ahead and done that anyway. And boy, I was so excited. I'd be standing down there by the end of the driveway looking down the road. Hey, Daddy. Yeah. There's some times when we please our God, the Heavenly Father, and we're excited because we know we've done what He wants us to do. Yeah. And then last of all, I'll give you this and I'll sit down. 
He's the glorious appearing shepherd. Titus 2.13, one of my favorite verses. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Somebody said, I've heard that all my life. I have too. That's the reason why I know it's a lot sooner now. i tell you how soon I believe it is. I believe he could come before we got out of this service this morning. Hey, but I had a preacher question that one time years ago. I was a young preacher, and I made that statement. And after service, he followed me outside. He said, I, I want to ask you something. I said, okay. He said, you really believe that? You know, I was 25 years old. You know how you are when you're 25 years old. I said, yeah, I believe it, don't you? <laughs> he said, well... Hey, some things that's got to happen before he could come. I said, well, help me out. What are they? Well, there's some things that's got to happen. I said, what are they? I'm young. Help me out. He never could help me out. So here I am at 68 years old, and I'm still preaching that he can come today. Amen. I haven't changed my mind. I'm looking for the Savior to come back. Thank you for the privilege of being here. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.